What the heck is up you guys? It's your boy Ace aka Animated Heroes here back with another action figure review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Kyoto Revel Tech Amazing Yamaguchi Tokyo Revengers Manjiro Sano or as you guys might know him Starting off with the sexy packaging, as you guys can see, Robotech did decide to go with something a little bit different. I noticed this the first time with the re-release of their Batman figure. I noticed that they changed the packaging, and actually they did it with their 2.0 Deadpool. I'm not sure if this is what their style is about to be. Uh, maybe the windowless packaging. That doesn't bother me much, but I'm sure there are a few collectors uh, that are still trying to get used to this with certain companies. But anyway, as you guys can see, you do have an image of him right here along the side of the packaging nothing much going on over here it just says revel tech amazing yamaguchi manjiro sano kyoto revel tech up there uh that blue right there says tokyo revengers and then the same information right there nothing much on the bottom on the side we've got an image of him looking dope on this side we've got two poses of him looking dope and then on the back we have several poses as well as the accessories at the bottom now i do hope that this isn't something they're going to stick to for their packaging because as you guys know I love art and I really love the creativity of some of their packages especially going back to the my hero stuff those look really good so I hope this right here is just for select releases now something random that I want to touch on is opening this guy up and getting ready to pull him out of the package they actually put this guy in a plastic bag not sure what that's about i'm not sure if that's something new once again but uh yeah this is exactly how i pulled the figure out of the plastic um i'm not i don't see it as a problem but i mean i just wanted to throw it out there so you guys can expect it if you pick this guy up now anyway, here is the figure that I'm sure caught many of us by surprise whenever it was announced by Revel Tech. We have Mikey, and this thing looks really dang good, man. I'll be honest, there are some problems with this guy, but to be honest, they're problems that I identified the moment that I saw the promo images. Uh, but... Overall, in terms of looks, this guy's solid, man. Uh, it definitely looks like he walked right out of the anime, man. Of course, it does also have that Revel Tech style that you either love or you hate, depending on how you feel about the company. But overall, I think that they captured this guy more than just well enough. So anyway, let's go ahead and take a closer look at Mikey. Now again, straight out of the packaging, as you guys can see, it looks as if Mikey walked right out of the anime. He has those almost lifeless eyes. He's very bland. But what's crazy is out of all the characters in the series, he's probably one of the nicest. If you've seen season one, then you already know. Not going to get into what happens later on in the series because, to be honest, I stopped watching. But um, I do really love this facial expression, man. It screams Mikey, and it also really captures the art style style of that that is Tokyo Revengers it just looks really good man also love what they did with the hair a ton of good sculpt work in here as you guys can see it is blonde as it's supposed to be but there is some shading in it as well a little bit of articulation at the back of the hair and then you see the little ponytail right here also this this looks very very solid uh, despite this being a tiny tiny figure there's quite a bit of sculpt work now not much along the torso we just have a shirtless Mikey as he normally is when he fights so it makes perfect sense I love how you got the bandages around the lower part of the abdomen uh, the pants are sculpted very nicely you got the belt which is painted just fine you got the uh, Tokyo Manji symbols all along the pants here that is the logo for his gang in case you are watching this series or you're watching this video and you don't know what that logo is it is not what you think it is but um i still don't know why the artist went with that because that is could be very controversial but that's another story uh they sculpted the pockets and everything these look really good the bagginess of the pants and then all the way down to the shoes it is a very solid figure very very small but it captures mikey's build just as it's supposed to now, in terms of the height of this guy, again, he is a smaller figure as he is supposed to be. To the very top of his head, he stands right at about five and a half inches. I think he's probably the smallest character in the series. 
Next to Chifu, I think Chifu is a little bit smaller than him. Maybe even Takamichi. I don't remember. It's been a while since I've watched it. But again, he's a small character, so they got the size on this guy, right? I really can't wait to see how Draken and Takamichi are going to scale with this figure. And I really hope that they give us others in the line as well. Moving on to articulation, he does have that style of Revel Tech joints. So you guys already know what that means. He's going to pose very well. Uh, he looks up about that much before the hair touches the shoulder. Uh, I mean, obviously, there was nothing they could do about that, but I think it's fine. He looks down very, very well. He can move his head and neck around for all kinds of expression. Arms go up and out about that much. Uh, with his arms being as slender as they are, I think it looks a little bit better with that joint uh, missing <laughs> joint or missing sculpt work underneath there. I think that just makes this look a tad bit better. And he does have a bicep swivel. But remember, if you turn it too much, it is kind of ugly, but it can always be hidden no matter how you're posing this guy. Single jointed elbow. Um, that is one of the issues I got with this guy. I know his arms are small, but I do feel like they probably could have worked uh, some kind of double jointed or at least double jointed articulation in there because that is a bit lackluster. Anyway, his hands move around just fine. You don't have to worry about these being limited whatsoever. Uh, he doesn't really have a butterfly joint, but he does have the range of having a butterfly joint and it's very, very well. Now, if, obviously, if you pose him up like that, you are going to see these joints in there. But I mean, if you've got him like this, that's perfectly fine. So you don't have to worry about that. And then again, you just tuck them back in. Diaphragm joint works very well. Another issue I have is that it does kind of pop off easily. And then when you put it on, it doesn't really click in there. So don't expect it to make a noise. Sometimes this guy does fall apart. That lower part was my bad. I actually didn't put that back on right earlier. But yeah, diaphragm joint works very well. It just does pop off as you guys can see. That could just be my copy. I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, be expecting that. Um, and then again, this piece right here, not feeling that. Uh, he does turn very well at the waist. As you guys can see, crunch forward is going to be fine. Uh, leaning back is also going to be fine. And then kicking forward. He's going to hit those kicking poses that you want him to. As he is Mikey, he's supposed to, man. He could totally hit a Marvel vs. Capcom or Mortal Kombat launcher. Like, no problem. That's one thing I really like. He does have this articulated area right here that's attached to the belt. Revoltech always does that. For some characters, I don't understand it. They could have easily just sculpted that into the pants and it would have been fine. But I'm not going to complain. Uh, it's not getting in the way or anything. He does have a swivel at the thigh no problem um and it's a single jointed knee with double jointed range this is what i wish they would have done on the elbows i think they could have done this and it would have worked just fine but yeah he does pose very well at the knee uh he doesn't have any articulation right here his foot goes down about that much up about that much really good ankle pivot and then he does have a toe hinge so yes this guy's gonna pose man if you want to get him into those tokyo revengers mikey's about to throw hands or kick rather fighting poses he's gonna do it and he's going to look nice as long as you know how to pose him up man this thing is solid in articulation it does have some hiccups but eh, i'm not gonna give him a pass because this guy was expensive but everything works now moving on to the accessories this is where my biggest problem with this figure comes in and i mean absolute biggest problem First off, he comes with a neutral head and a pair of fist hands right out of the packaging. Then he comes with two different pairs, let me refocus, of these relaxed hands here, which aren't bad. I mean, it's cool to have these. Uh, he comes with just one right gripping, stylish, martial arts, pose, hand, choking, <laughs> considering that it's Tokyo Revengers, you could use it for that. Uh, one choking hand. And that's it. No left hand. And then he comes with one, I guess, right hand or left hand to go in his pocket. Not even two hands to go in his pocket. Not two gripping hands. And that's all you get for hands. That is pretty bad. 
Now, next up, he comes with a couple of face plates. He comes with one where he's kind of looking off to the left here, which isn't bad. I mean, that is something that Mikey does a lot. But you also have another face where he's looking off to the left, where it's just slightly more irritated. Um, they could have at least made him look in two different directions, but whatever. Then you have another kind of angry stern face if that's what you want to call it but this one looks almost identical to the one that he comes with in the packaging so this is another one that's pretty much unnecessary so that's two face plates right there that are absolutely useless out of five and then he comes with a mouth open expression now this just kind of looks like he's talking it's not i don't know like it doesn't look like he's fighting as he does now granted mikey even when he fights he doesn't get very expressive but there is no anger in this whatsoever it just looks like a face for when he's talking to takamichi or something i don't know or draken but this just there's no anger in it whatsoever so these faces for one they lack options, but then they also lack details. So that's very lackluster. But then we have his jacket, which one issue I have with this is there is no peg on it for you to actually get it to stay on him. He has a peg hole in the back, but there's no peg on the jacket. So you can't even peg it onto the figure, which Revel Tech is known for making their stuff peg on. So that's very weird i don't know why they got it to where you just sit it on the shoulders but i mean it sits flush so whatever but then the jacket has no articulation whatsoever like this figure is 80 bucks man and the only thing really really good about it is the look of it and the articulation but the sleeves don't blow the the lower jacket doesn't blow it just kind of sits there it's painted very nicely it looks very good but Come on, man. Revel Tech, they have never made a mistake like this. I don't know what happened with this figure, man, but this thing feels like it was extremely rushed and not very well thought out, especially when you compare this to their other stuff. So accessory-wise, it's the biggest disappointment with this guy for sure. And also one thing I did want to throw in there as well because I forgot it in the last segment. He doesn't come with any peg holes to even attach accessories. So like... He doesn't come with any impact effect, which would have been perfect for his kicking poses. But even if you have figures like All Might or any figure that they've put out that have impact effects, you can't even peg them onto him, man. There's like no holes in this figure other than this one right here, which is basically for a display stand. So, yeah, he's just kind of lacking a whole lot of stuff that usually the standard Revel Tech figures have. And for those of you who want to see what he looks like with the jacket on, here he is. Definitely doesn't look bad, but doesn't look as cool as I want it to look. Again, it just kind of sits on the edges of his shoulders. And if you're looking at this, it kind of looks like it's just going to slide right off of him. So I kind of wish that the collar came in a little bit more. Again, I also wish that this pegged into his back but whatever it is on him and it's not going anywhere i just don't think this looks as cool as it could have looked but that's a personal nitpick so it's up to you whether you like this or not now moving on to size comparisons here he is standing next to the figma jujutsu kaisen greatness satoru gojo be on the lookout for season two because it is coming soon we have him standing next to the sh figure arts spy family greatness lloyd forger and of course we do have him standing next to a dawson model popeye uh, I didn't know what to do for size comparison, so just be expecting a bunch of random figures that I have near me. Next up, here he is standing next to a Revel Tech My Hero Academia or Boku no Hero Academia Deku. We have him standing next to an SH Figure Arts body with a demoniacal fit head sculpt, Super Saiyan 2 Goku. And then we also have him standing next to the Figma Kimetsu no Yaiba or Demon Slayer Tanjiro. Here he is standing next to the Fortnite Victory Royal Series Punk, a Mofex or Metacom Toy Symbiote or Black Suit Spider-Man, and a Revel Tech Black Panther. Last but not least, here he is standing next to a Buzz Mod Kimetsu no Yaiba or Demon Slayer Akaza. We have him standing next to the Bandai America Stranger Things Vecna or Big Vec. And then we have him standing next to a Marvel Legends 3-pack Daredevil. So for my final thoughts on this figure, I got to say, it is definitely a solid figure in terms of 
sculpt, paintwork, detail, and articulation. Does that make it worth it? I would say that's entirely up to you because the accessories definitely make this guy lackluster. And it's the price point that really makes me feel that way. Now, if this guy was maybe a $40, $50 figure, then I would have been all right with it. But this guy is 70 bucks right off the jump after shipping. You're paying about 90 if you import it. I don't even know what this guy is going for domestically, but I'd imagine it's either 100 or close to it, which is just entirely too much. I don't know if this has to do with the licensing, uh, maybe something to do with um, production. I can't say, but is it justified? I'm sorry. In my opinion, I don't think so. Now, I picked this figure up already knowing that it had these problems because I'm a fan of Tokyo Revengers and because I really wanted to see the turnout of this figure. I think it's great. I think it looks great, but it just has some problems, man. And whether it's worth the pickup, that just depends on how much you love the character and how much you love Tokyo Revengers. Uh, since I watched season one, I kind of got out of it and I have no interest in watching season two. I have no idea why. Maybe it's just because it got extremely repetitive and then there's not really any characters that I like enough for me to stick around with the series. Uh, Chifu is definitely best boy, but nah, it just it didn't do it for me. And Mikey is there too, but it just didn't do it for me. So for me, this figure... It's just not going to work, man. Um, I might pick up the others just for review purposes, but I'm going to tell you guys right now, I already sold this figure, so don't be expecting to see Mikey as a size comparison. Unless I can get someone to send it to me, then of course I'll do it. But other than that, nah, man. Um, I took a couple shots, had some fun with him. He's definitely great to pose, but overall, man, it just, this ain't it for me. I'm sorry. But... That is my review. Hope that you guys enjoyed. If so, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It always helps me out. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload new content. And last but not least, follow me on everything you see listed in the description below to keep up with my activity outside of YouTube. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Stay safe wherever you are. And uh, bye.